This is NDTV and you are watching NDTV Prime. incredibly tough and now for a very tough one-on-one -on -one, we have with us the man that I've spent a lot of time with back there in Corning but now you're on home territory right so first I'm going to just find out from you exactly what you thought so I did ask you when do you make your trip to India you did say very soon you lived up to that promise but did we live up to our promise absolutely I uh, heard about India for many years Corning's a very diverse company we have a lot of Indian scientists and they would always tell me John you have to go see our beautiful country. So I was so excited to finally come here in person. And as you know, or maybe you don't because you live here, it can be overwhelming, the sights, the sounds, the scenery. But for me, going to any country, it starts with the people and the food. And the people have been delightful, and the food is amazing. So I'm ready to stay here for a long time. All right, but I'll tell you why. I'm very happy to see you here because of the fact that you made a promise. But even more than that is some of the announcements and things that you've really come in and spoken about out here because there is this fallacy here, especially in India, with it being such a large phone market, really, moving towards the world number one today, that Gorilla Glass is only for the rich. Gorilla Glass is only for the elitist. It's only for the top of the line flagship phones. And even though we've tried very, very hard to dispel that myth, but I'm glad that you've come here and spoken about phones, budget phones, economy phones, phones for the true India. And that also will come with something that I believe is very important for them, and that is protection. Mm -hmm. Nothing breaks the heart more than a person who saved up for six months or a year, bought their first smartphone only to crash and smash the screen in the first few Absolutely. days. So I think it's great. But can you tell us a little bit more about what's the India plan? What kind of phone this thing? And how do we bring it down to a level where no phone on earth could be made without maybe Gorilla Glass on it? That I really think should be something we should strive for. Well, let me start with your first point, Rajiv. Um, Gorilla Glass is so good. The market leader, the performance is outstanding that people think it's such a good product, it must be expensive and maybe out of reach for certain applications. But really, that's not the truth. We've invested a tremendous amount in technology and research to make it perform like that. We have large tanks. Uh, we run a lot of glass through our tanks, so we can make it very cost effectively. So yes, the premium phones typically have our glass, very, very high share there. But if you think about it, in a phone, there's roughly 30 to 40 rupees worth of glass, regardless of what the type of phone is. So our hypothesis is, look, you can get a cheaper glass and maybe save 10, 15, 20 rupees, but by doing so, you're putting a 5,000, 7,000, 10,000 rupee phone at risk, and it'll be more susceptible to damage if it's dropped. So that's less than 0.5 or 1% of the retail price of the phone. So that's really been our core message here, which is not only does Gorilla play at the premium, the intermediate segment, but even in the value segment, phones below 7,000 rupees, 5,000 rupees, it still makes sense because you made the point. A person who's buying their first phone, half month salary, full month salary, they want to protect that phone as much as somebody who's buying a high-end phone, right? In fact, probably more so. They're the people who are least able to replace a screen, replace a phone. So they're the ones who deserve the most protection. So to think about them getting a cheaper type of material to protect their phone, it just doesn't make any sense to us. So the numbers that you gave, and these are numbers that you know, are very familiar to me also, uh, the numbers that you gave seem to point towards the fact that it's a no-brainer for any manufacturer, any phone brand anywhere in the world to not go with something that would make their customer a happier customer, more satisfied, more secure customer. Why hasn't it happened till now when it's such a small percentage investment that is made? I think the returns would be there for both the brand and the customer. So if the mathematics makes sense, why hasn't it happened till now? 
I think many, in fact, most brands uh, do choose Gorilla Glass, especially in the intermediate and premium segment. Where the pressure comes in the value segment, the margins are so thin and there's so much pressure on the bomb and the cost of that phone that even saving 10 or 20 rupees um, looks attractive. Now, what happens is sometimes the brands will tell the people making their phones, well, you can go ahead and decide the glass, uh, decide which glass goes in the phone as long as you meet my cost target. So when that decision gets pushed further back in the supply chain, sometimes that's where that decision is being made for cheaper materials. We found when the, when the brand controls the decision through the entire supply chain, very often our message resonates with them. Okay. Now, there is another thought process that I've been now nursing and speaking about uh, in you know, the last few months, and that is that most smartphones, especially, are made fragile by design, right? It's a, it's a favorite topic of mine nowadays, right? Uh, and I always give an analogy of uh, people wouldn't buy a car if a car was the same as the mobile phone industry because that means people would be forced to buy a car without seat belts, without airbags, without any security at all, for the money that you're investing. How is it that we haven't been able to crack it for a product that is actually with us the most in the history of all devices since mankind, right? It's a phone with us 24-7 in very precarious situations, usually slips out of the hand, off a table, gets wet. Uh, most people, once they crack the glass, they carry on uh, with a broken or a scratched glass. How is it that certain standards have not really been pressed upon? And what could we, as the people who go out with the message, or customers who want to give a message to the brand, do something about this, that certain standards have to be actually guaranteed. Those would be the bare minimum. You think it could happen in the mobile phone industry? Well, let me start with your first assertion that phones are made fragile by design. I'm, I'm not sure I agree with that. I think there's okay, a... I, I don't think very many right. people do, but this is me and this is the way no, I've been I get it, I get it, and you're entitled to your opinion. I think there's, there's, this, uh, there's this tension in the system that we want to make a phone as robust as possible but also sleek and elegant and a little bit of a designer But with item, the current right? design philosophy and materials available, is that really two opposing forces? I think you still can make it fairly slim and very good looking and not fragile and delicate. Yeah, and I think that's what, that's what manufacturers are trying to do. So the things that impact the robustness of the design, one, the glass you choose, right? We would recommend Gorilla Glass, but two, the thickness of the glass is important. How that glass is finished, what the edges look like, how they're tapered how they're protected. That's just the glass and the cover. Then you get onto the handset itself. How stiff is it? What materials are used in the handset? And how is it packaged? So I think when all those are taken in concert, you can make a very, very robust design. And it starts with the best materials, which we believe Gorilla Glass is one of the best choices. Now, people choose to put screen protectors on, which can help the robustness of the device cases. So I think there are other ways to protect the device in total. But to your point, you know, we're only about 10 years into the smartphone mission, and I've read some recent material that this device, as you point out, is so valuable to people. They carry it's the most valuable thing. They don't want to lose it. We've seen statistics in India um, that 60% of people say it's the most valuable thing they carry day in and day out. They'd rather lose their wallet by a factor of 10 times and lose their cell phone. But that dynamic's not going to change. So they're here for a long time, and we can't think of any technology that's going to displace the smartphone, whether it be AR or VR or flexible this or flexible that, the phone is going to be the portal to a better life, to the internet for a long time to come. So I think 10 years may seem like a long time, but we're maybe relatively early in the design cycle, and I believe you will see continuing robustness of designs, and uh, we are going to continue to do our part with how we design our glass. We've just launched Gorilla Glass 5. We have probably our next two glasses already in development, okay. and they'll come in the future, I can't specify the timing, but I will say each successive generation of Gorilla Glass will improve the drop performance and or the scratch performance. So we're trying to do our part. Let's also talk about the competition. Not competition with other people that do it or a brand that can do it, but purely technology from the kind of plastics and resins and composites and other things that are coming in on one side where people are saying it's almost glass-like. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, there is technology where people say the next big radical revolution will come with the foldable, bendable screens, which obviously can't be glass for sure. Mm -hmm. You have two sides that are now coming in, and Corning comes in with a legacy of glass being what mm -hmm. is really the name is all about. 
You think that there could be now a bit of a threat to what you've created till Corning Gorilla Glass 5 from the plastics and the foldables? Great question. So as you know from your visit to Corning, we're a 165-year-old company, and we've talked about this. Somebody's first perception may be, well, are you old and slow and stodgy? How do you stay in business for 165 years unless you continue to innovate and obsolete your own technology? So for Gorilla Glass, we always run scared. We have the best product, but that's because we're always worried about plastic, other types of glasses, other materials. So we continue to innovate in the glass space. Plastic is, for a screen material, it was rejected by the industry 10 years ago, and it's been constantly rejected. It scratches, um, it doesn't have the, the same tactile feel as glass does. So I don't think you'll see plastic on uh, rigid devices. And even for foldable devices, we've uh, demonstrated glass less than 100 microns thick that can bend to a five millimeter radius. So as the industry starts to test truly flexible displays, I wouldn't count glass out just yet. Glass has some challenges to overcome, but so does plastic. So I think glass will be a material of choice on the front well into the future. And the interesting um, trend we're seeing now is people are considering glass on the back of the device as well because RF transparency becomes more and more important. The more data you push on 4G, 5G is on the horizon a few years out, and metal as a material on the back isn't the best for RF transparency or wireless charging. So you're left with plastic, glass, and glass ceramic. And plastic on the back even can have issues with heat for wireless charging, not the most elegant material, so really we're seeing increased interest on glass and glass ceramic on the back of the phone. Okay. So, so, so let, me, let me get this. This is something that has really excited me, as you said, and spoke about it. So you think, you know, when we, when we describe a future device, uh, there's a sure shot guarantee when I do a description of one particular device that people absolutely lose their marbles on, you know, their jawline drops. And that is when I say that you may have a four or five inch device, which you, when you will unfold, becomes a 15 inch screen laptop otherwise. Are you saying that we could actually pull that off with glass in the front? Is that something that's plausible in the future? I think if you envision a foldable display, one degree of fold, depending on the radius, there are absolutely glasses that would work in that situation. Okay. Now, if you have to fold it multiple times, that's not gonna work, but certainly a single fold you could consider glass as a cover material. Okay. Now, even with those products on the horizon, I think we'll start to see um, concept products, maybe later this year, maybe into next year. They have a lot of challenges with electronics and batteries and other things folding, but I still think the handset will be a primary product. I think a foldable display may be a supplemental product, but I just see the basic handset we know and love today, um, it's gonna be hard to replace that anytime soon.